and welcome once again to Storytime with Malachi Frost. I am your host, Malachi Frost, and today's story is entitled, Gerald, the Teapot. Let us begin. Once upon a dark and stormy summer's day, when the sun was shining in its usual half assed way, there was a little teapot called Gerald. Gerald was a male teapot, which means his spout was slightly bigger than the female teapot's, but due to his parents thinking he was going to be a girl, Gerald only had girly things to wear. All his teapot friends had trucks and guns on their tea cozies, but Gerald only had little flowers and duckies. And not the cool duckies with machine guns like Henry had. Anyway, one day Gerald got very angry about his tea cozy dilemma and decided to venture out on a quest of epic size, for a teapot anyway, and venture to the other side of the shelf to the dark side of the shelf. His mother and father, Teapot, were very scared for Gerald and pleaded with him not to go. But Gerald was a prick and went anyway. His friends and family all begged him not to cross the shelf, warning Gerald of the horrors that lay waiting just behind the sugar jar on the dark side of the shelf. But Gerald had his teapot in and couldn't hear them, so off Gerald went into the darkness on the other side of the sugar jar. His little teapot eyes were not used to such dim light, so at first Gerald couldn't see anything. As he staggered around blindly, he bumped into another teapot. Something felt weird about about this teapot, but Gerald just couldn't put his finger on. Yes, that's right, finger. He only has the one. It was when his eyes adjusted that Gerald noticed why this other teapot had felt so strange to the touch. The other teapot was naked. He had stumbled blindly upon the hidden nudist colony of the shelf. All the teapots and saucers were all nude, while the cutlery laid around, spooning and forking and knifing about. Nude. At first, Gerald felt quite scared of this place, but after talking to his newfound friends, Gerald discovered that he too wanted to be a nudist. His life of always wearing girly cozies had driven Gerald to the life of a nudist kitchen colony, and so for many years, Gerald lived there in the nudist colony with all his nude friends. Meanwhile, Gerald's friends and family grew grew worried and anxious for Gerald, as they had not heard from him for such a long time. They made a committee that made a vote on who should be in Parliament, then Parliament made a vote to see who should be in charge of the parliamentary biscuits. Then the biscuits voted that they should get to be raisins instead, because being a biscuit was already crummy enough without being in Parliament as well. So while the parliament was organising the debate of whether the biscuits can be raisins or remain biscuits, a group of Gerald's friends grew tired of the parliament's ways, threw off the shackles uh, that were placed there by Gongo, the shackle placer guy, and they became a rebel force. They led their rebel army towards the sugar jar, with their families following close behind, begging them not to go, screaming and weeping that to go to the other side of the sugar jar would be suicide. The following crowd grew more and more restless until the soldiers could no longer take it. The general of the rebel army, a terracotta fish called Sir Bubbles, turned to address the crowd. Friends, cutlery, sauce boats, lend me your ears or other listening devices. Several confused elderly pots threw their hearing aids at him. That's not what I meant, sighed Sir Bubbles. Just listen to what I say. Sadly, the elderly pots couldn't hear him because they now had no hearing aids. Our dear friend Gerald is beyond this pot of satanic sweetener. We must go forth and rescue him from the evil clutches of the spice people. The crowd, still restless, refused to accept what must be done to save Gerald. So Sir Bubbles ordered his troops to open fire on the crowd. As the troops fired into the crowd, the screeching of fallen knives as they collapsed onto plates rang through the air. Many plates and cups were were forced to jump from the shelf and plummet to the ground below. When the entire crowd was thought to be disposed of, the soldiers ceased fire, and as the pepper smoke cleared, only one little child was left standing. The little child was called Pepier. Pepier was a small rubber squid whose father was lost at sea on a a fishing expedition. Admiral Forkington III, a rather nasty saucer, raised his rifle to shoot the boy. Whack! Sir Bubbles' terracotta fin came down hard against the Admiral's head. You shall not kill this boy, 
for he and I are the same. We are both sea-related. Sir Bubbles approached the crying squid to comfort him. However, as he got closer, he realized the small squid has a zipper on his back. Sir Bubbles turned to run, but it was too late. Thin Liesel, the salt shaker, had already stabbed Sir Bubbles through the fin. As Sir Bubbles lay there, slowly bleeding to death, many thoughts crossed his mind. How did Thin Liesel fit into such a small rubber squid costume? Why didn't I just shoot him? How am I bleeding to death? I'm made of terracotta and don't have any blood. Quite embarrassed, Sir Bubbles got up and went back to the front lines of battle, his troops trying hard to muffle their laughter as he passed. Once he was again in control of his army, Sir Bubbles led them around the sugar jar. Into the darkness they wandered. Sir Bubbles slowly merged into the darkness, followed by his second in command. Soon the whole army was in pitch black. Sir, Bell, Sir Bubbles felt something weird and unfamiliar in the darkness. It was only when his eyes had adjusted that he realized why it had felt so weird to him. What he felt was nothing like he had ever felt before. As his eyes focused in, he could hardly believe them. He removed them and polished them three or four times before coming to the conclusion that what he was seeing was indeed real. Before Sir Bubbles and his army were ten naked teapots, bound and gagged. Sir Bubbles quickly released them, clothing them, and asked them what had happened. The new teapots were quite mad at Sir Bubbles. They told him quite abusively but they, that they weren't attacked, but they were there by choice. They gagged themselves as some sort of sick mating ritual, stripping off the clothes. They fled into the forest of herbs. Only one remained. He looked at the army and smiled. Ah, my friends, said the naked teapot. It has been far too long. Come, join me in my new home. Gerald? Sir Bubbles asked cautiously. Yes, it is I, old friend. Will you join me in the colony of nudist kitchen supplies? Slightly caught off guard, Sir Bubbles answers slowly. Well, I'm not sure. Do we get any medical cover? Well, no, replied Gerald in a small, quite ashamed voice. But we do get to run around nude, screaming, Woo! 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 Yeah! 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 Yucky! Yucky! If that interests you at all. Immediately, the whole army threw off their clothes and ran around screaming. And they are still there today. The end. Well, there you go, everybody. That was the tale of Gerald, the teapot. If you would like to hear more story time with Malachi Frost tales, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and leave any comments down in the comments section. For right now, as always, Frost Squad, have a good day, have a good life, and I'll catch you all down the road.